Okay. Well, this is, uh, oh, we're almost, almost ran over that guy. <laughs> this is John Palm, and we're coming to you from San Francisco. And uh, my good buddy Bob here is the cameraman. He's doing an excellent, excellent job. We're on our way out to the Marina District, and, uh, and uh, he said that Golden Gate Park was that way, and it's probably, probably true. Uh, just a second. Here we go. Oh, boy. I, I was almost a cab driver. That, that was my uh, occupation before I became an industrial distributor. So. Uh, and this is one of the best towns to be a cab driver. We're going down this very long street here. This is uh, Van Ness, I think. We're, there's Ness. Home. Van Ness. Yeah. Now, this is California Street. Uh, if you've ever... <laughs> close enough. It's close enough. There's Grand Central. It's Grand Central Market right there. And... Uh, and we're going down in the uh, Norton, this this uh, tour bus here, this not tour bus, so city bus is about ready to take a, take a turn there. We are so happy to have a car because uh, I was, uh, I thought I had and rented this Hertz car. It's a beautiful car. Uh, it's made by Ford. And uh, as we know, those are not made in Detroit anymore, but that's okay. No, it's made somewhere else, California somewhere. That's great. Yeah. Uh, off Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, at the world-famous Alamo Park in uh, lovely San, San Francisco. This is one of the best views, and it's colorful and, and delightful views of San Francisco. I wish I could, I wish you could be here, but uh, I'm going to go down there in just one second. Hold on. This is uh, San Francisco, home of the Rice Roni Company. I'm John Paul, your host, and uh, right now we're. Shacker pool. Oh, the water looks great right now. We better hit the better hit it, huh? You got your bathing suit? <laughs> <laughs> this is where it was right here. It's all filled in. Flash Shacker pool. The world's longest pool according to the Guinness Book of World Records. And this by golly, this is it. This is this is where it is. And there's the bathhouse, the famous Flash Shacker pool. And it was all the way down at the end. You can't really see it. It would be all the way down at the end. This would be about the middle of the pool here, and it'll be all the way down at the end. And all this now will be condominiums. So here we are in San Francisco at the Flash Shaker Pool. I just wanted to show you that. Here's the gateway to it, right there. That's the exit. You got your bathing suit. If you got your bathing suit. You can take a jump in the sand. This is it. The world's largest largest pool in the world. Okay, from this angle, you're seeing where the Flash Shaker Pool was. It was from here, it was all where that parking lot is in this landfill, and the bathhouse is off to the right, and it was the entire length, as we see right below us, and I'm going to zoom in on the bathhouse so you can kind of see where it is over there. There's the, there's the bathhouse right there, and that's where Dad and Gunnar were uh, last month when they came and looked on the other side of the bathhouse. And the, this is the entire length, and you can see all the way down to where the end of the pool would be, and uh, be down to where those trees are. That's where the end of the pool was, and all this stuff is, is filled in, and it all, came all the way back here, went all the way over there. It was a long, wide pool. It was actually over here, too. So it went from here all the way down to the very end. Okay, now we're seeing the very end. There's the end of the pool. And uh, there's the bathhouse right there. There's the bathhouse. And now uh, we're going to come back and show you what it looks like. Dempsey right Dumpster. Yeah, that's it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are looking at the pump station from the other side of the Flash Acker Pool, and we are on the beach side of uh, San Francisco. And I'm going to show you, now we're looking south on the beach there. There's Bob uh, Marcellinus from uh, Seattle, Washington, and he's taking a picture of the uh, 
people that are down shooting golf balls on the beach, and the dogs, and cats. And we can look right down there and see the lovely uh, Pacific Ocean, and it's just beautiful. And as we pan, we're going to see Bob there, and uh, go right up north, up to the to the cliff house up there, which is just fine. Yeah, there we go. Cars here, and uh, I'll be out in front. Hey, this is John Paul, and uh, again we're at the beach here, and uh, we're going to be heading up uh, north uh, to the cliff house in just a minute. And this is the uh, Pacific Ocean. It's a very long beach uh, on the uh, western part of San Francisco, and it's a very, very lovely beach. Uh, uh, you can see the beach grass here that's been growing, that's been planted to uh, keep the beach from uh, rotting away. Um, and, it's, and it's nice and breezy and cold, similar to uh, the beaches uh, on the Oregon coast. I, I feel right at home here. And, uh, we're surprised that the uh, houses uh, uh, along this section of town are, are not uh, as nice as, as you would think they would be in such a in one of the most expensive cities in the world. But they're probably nice on the inside. But on the outside, uh, they take their toll from the, uh, the beach wind and everything coming uh, across uh, from the dunes here. But it's a lovely, lovely view. And this is the Pacific Ocean. Uh, some of the biggest waves in the world are right here on the shore, right here. overcast day but you know it's a perfect day for uh, for being out for filming and for doing this sort of thing. It's, it's just great. We love, we love it. Well, pretty soon now we'll be uh, maybe getting a bike to eat and then we'll be heading out to the airport to pick up uh, Bob's wife and uh, my sister Julie. And so we'll be uh, going out there shortly. Going to make, uh, this is uh, John Palm, Eyewitness News. Chinatown looking at some of the fantastic jewelry and things. And look at all this stuff here. Oh. I'm gonna focus. You see a good place.
I'm sorry. Are you taking a picture of me? Okay, Matthews. This is a wild place here, ladies and gentlemen. We're looking up. Okay, this is the Golden Dragon. This is where we're going. The Golden Dragon. Yo, I am coming. Okay, we're going to take a picture of the Marriott Hotel. There we can see it. Off in the distance, in Chinatown in the background. Here we are in Chinatown, Bob Marcellinus. Marcellinus. Is this uh, New Mexico? This is Mexico. There's Bob. Doing an excellent job. Looking at the fine Chinese artwork. Now we're off to the airport, right, Bob? You bet. Okay. We're leaving San Francisco forever. Do your impression of Dave Thomas. Who? Of Dave Thomas. You know the comedian, Dave Thomas? No, I don't know. Oh, okay. Your impression of an Arab. Hey, this is John. We're here in San Francisco, and this is the main John Street. And we have with us the uh, San Francisco Palomar. We can't get away from food.
This is Fishman's Wharf, one of the most famous wharfs in all the world. And if you look up to the over there, Casanolas and those, those pelicans that sit on the roof over there. See the pelicans? Pelicans of San Francisco. There's one. Yeah, charming, charming things, boats, places to eat. Fishman's Wharf. Yep, here we are. Walk away, cocktails. Oh, are you taking that? Thanks for taking my back. Oh, wait. Yeah. 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 Fishman's Wharf, same sign. Putting those live crabs in there, boil them up. This is really what I should get for to your kids, you know, property of Alcatraz. And it's an enlisted number. What do you think, Jen? You want to buy a mug? <laughs> hey, people says, want to make what some are you sales doing here. here? Yeah, I don't know. What are we doing in here? This, this will fit the mouth. Oh, it's something. And this? Perfect gift for Father's Day. We're getting a clear focus on the USS Pompano submarine tour. This is the Pompano submarine. Uh oh. From behind Alcatraz is Angel Island. Angel Island is the Ellis Island of the West, where most of our Asian immigrants first came to the United States. That's where I am. Angel Island is populated by a lot of wild deer. It's a fun place to go hiking or bicycle riding. You can visit Angel Island on the Red and White Fleet Pier 43 and the half. I'll show you where they're at in just a couple of moments. To the left of our car, across the parking lot, you'll see the largest wax museum in the United States. Also ahead of us to the left is if California was an independent nation, we'd be the ninth wealthiest in the world. Coming up on the right, the red and white fleet, Pier 43 and a half. They'll take you to Angel Island, Sausalito, and Tiburon. Sausalito and Tiburon are in the Rim County across the Golden Gate Bridge. Also to the right, the World War II Fleet submarine. The USS Dwight must be turned, you'll see large steaming vats. Dungeness crabs have dropped into these vats and serve as crab cocktails. You'll also notice along the right that whenever you see the crabs, they're always laying belly up. The reason for that is it's illegal to serve female crabs. Female crabs must be released into the waterway to make baby crabs. If you ask me, the female crabs got lucky. They lay them belly up so the inspector can walk by and make sure that law is being obeyed. Three blocks straight ahead of our car is the Mason Street cable car turnaround. So now we join back a couple more passengers.
didn't see you, Rob. I didn't see you, Trip. Jump down one of the jump down the phone numbers on one of the boats close to the rail to the right and give the captains a call. The boats leave about six in the morning and come back around two or three in the afternoon with the catch of the day. It's a good idea to jot down several phone numbers because not every boat goes out every day. As far as price goes, they're all about the same. You eat it. <laughs> she said. She said, "What would I do if I caught one?" Did you eat it? It however could be with a difficult thing in your hotel room trying to figure out how to skin fish or train fish. Casting knowledge is a pretty good restaurant as well. Most of the restaurants around here have their own fishing plates and without catching their own fish. It's very fresh. Yeah. If you like seafood and you want to go to what is about a doubt the local's favorite seafood restaurant, then you want to go to Comas. Coming up on the right in just a moment, you'll see Fish Alley. At the very end of the alley here to the right, you'll see Scomas. It's a real late little bar. Here's the last and newest addition to the wharf area, the Anchorage Shopping Center. The Anchorage opened up in 1973 and has about 35 shops and restaurants. In front, you'll see the pile with all his pairs, one of our more colorful street artists here. Here to the left. On the right, our fan castle. These kids are really good. Here to the right. After our car, you'll see some little doggies wearing top hats, sunglasses, and smoking cigars here to the left. Here to the right, a little band playing music. You never know what you're going to find in San Francisco. Girders. Along the walls of the cannery, you'll see these circles of stars in the middle of them. That's where the girders are on the the building. There's about 50 shops and restaurants, that's the inside the cannery. Then look to the left between the two big buildings and you'll see the cannery courtyard. A nice place to take a load off your feet and a load of money out of your pocket. I call them as I see them on the heart of this city tour. The second street to the right, the second street to the right will be the High Street Pier of the National Maritime Museum. America's largest fleet of historic ships are anchored here. No one can $2, kids are free. The tan building next to it is the home of the Dolphin Club. These folks go swimming every day in the 30 to 60 feet of the bay without wetsuits. You're welcome to go swimming with them. I'll stand on the shoreline and watch. That water is cold. I wouldn't get in there with your body. Coming up on the right will be the best cable car line to ride, in my humble opinion, the High Street Cable Car Turnaround. This line offers the best views, without a doubt. These cars on the right left Union Square, traveled over Knob Hill, then Russian Hill straight above, and they end here with a manually turnaround and sent back up again over the hills. It costs $2 for two hours to ride the cable cars. The first cable car line runs up and down California Street. Across the intersection on the right, the point of Vista Cafe, where Irish coffee was first introduced to the United States. And across the intersection on the left is TGIF, thank goodness it's Friday. You know what I think you like that. <laughs> the hill straight ahead is known roughly as Lazzaroni Hill, because the several Lazzaroni commercials filmed this hill in the cable box. To the right of our car, way out in the distance to the right, there is the Golden Gate Bridge. The Golden Gate Bridge received its name because it bridges the Golden Gate. That's the name of the waterway the bridge crosses. The Golden Gate is the only inlet to the San Francisco Bay. The waterway to the right is Aquatic Park. This is the main place the Dolphin Club has its very coldest. If you look over here, you'll see that at the very most they're wearing bathing suits, no wet suits. I see the very most because some of them go swimming in there all together as they say. Even the birthday suits is another way, of In the bus. Pick your favorite terminology. <laughs> the color to the left, the internationally acclaimed Ghirardelli Square. This used to be the Ghirardelli Chocolate Factory. 
The Chocolate Factory moved out of the city several years ago. In 1963, these buildings were remodeled to their present shape. Shop there. And ahead of the car on the right is a large building that looks just like a ship. This is the San Francisco National Maritime Museum. At this end of the museum is the first non-profit senior center in the United States. It's an interesting to know that the history of this building is not a museum of the past. It's free and open to the public. Intersection on the right, the call the intersection on the right, you see a building that looks just like a prison. That's Galileo High School. The high school has the attention to the monitor of our relief and some other fantasy on the ground. As we come back to our north point, we can arrive down to our point and go to the ladder for a mason, an operating military base from the mid-70s. Behind that is the Marina District, where the worst of the October 17 earthquake damage occurred, and in front of the wall is a street named Van Ness. The Hard Rock Cafe here is down Van Ness, about a mile and a half on the right, to the right of Wallace Fort Mason. It's about a mile and a half down on the right between Sacramento and California Street. She's not a happy camper. <laughs> this building was destroyed by the 06 earthquake and fire, and what you see here was rebuilt in 1911 to its original appearance. Ahead of us, way out in the distance, you'll see the Oakland side of the Bay Bridge ahead of us in the distance. It was this open cantilever part of the bridge that had a 20-foot section of the upper level dropping to the lower level on October 17th. You heard about that in the news. Across the intersection on the left is Green Peak, the environmental store, and down to the left, one of the bush views on the tour. A beautiful view to the left of the Balcunta Fanning Belt over High Street Pier, Alcatraz, and Angel Island. A gorgeous view to the left. I go as slow as I can, but I can't stop. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. We look to the right as we cross High Street, you'll see the High Street Hill, the steepest hill the cable cars travel. If you'd like to drive down the quickest street in the world in your car, drive up the High Street Hill to the very top and turn left on Lumpard. I can't drive you down the quickest street, here's why. About eight years ago, a man driving a minibus, half the size of this vehicle, was bribed $50 by a passenger to drive him down the quickest street. He made it to the second curve and got stuck. Lumbar was closed for three weeks while the police tried to figure out what to do. They finally had to airlift the bus out by a Navy helicopter from Treasure Island Navy Base. If he couldn't make it, we wouldn't have a chance and I'd have to pay the airfare. I'll get you as close to the Crooked Street as I legally can in a few minutes. You'll get a pretty good deal of it. That's what makes it a cantilever bridge. Just beyond the last set of steel curtains where that accident occurred in 2017. The main thing to do is the woman had a video camera on her real interview. We're now turning around on the Avenue. That's where we are. Right ahead is the tallest building in the city, the Trans-America Pyramid. The pyramid is 850 feet high, owned by the Trans-America Insurance Corporation. People often wonder, the guy that works on the top floor of that building, does he have come yet? Good see, good see. Here to the right, it looks like a wooden house with a circling keyhole out front, but it's really made out of stucco or plaster. There's no one on that house, but you can see. Like so much of the city, that house is based on an illusion. Ahead of the car to the left in the distance is Quake Tower, high atop Telegraph Hill. Quake Tower is a tribute to San Francisco policy of fire department. He was the city's first female firefighter, Lily Hitchcock Quake. It was said that Lily not only chased fires, she also chased fire men. She was a scandal this. I'll tell you more about Lily and Quake Tower later on. As we cross the next street, Francisco is really leaving the builder upon which this was built and pulling on the solid ground. We're also the inner, the outskirts of North Beach, Little Italy, the Italian district. North Beach was a beach until the 1880s. Coming up on the right, Bimbo is 365 Club. Bimbo is an internationally acclaimed nightclub, and it's also proof that yes, we do have Bimbo in San Francisco. I think you were thinking that's why I thought I'd be in the front. San Francisco had a lot of steep streets. The second street to the right, Taylor, is the steepest street in the entire city as far as the degree of the end line. Here to the right, how's that for a city street? It's a city street. Coming up on the right, we the quickest street in the world, Lombard. The street can be seen from the right, you will walk the road starting to the right, at the top of Russian Hill, and you'll see what looks like a flower drive, a current drive to the right. 
Lombard sunk into the right at the top of the hill, changing direction eight times in a single block. They tell me Lombard is the crookedest street in the world, but I'm not so sure. I've always thought Wall Street was the crookedest street. It was made crook as a horse-drawn carriage to handle the steep inclines prior to the exhibit given in 1870. And then the cars to the left, over the front of the library, you'll see the steepest of the church of St. Peter of Paul. Marilyn had been divorced. Therefore, the couple were married at City Hall and had their wedding reception at St. Peter of Paul's. It is, without a doubt, the most important church for San Francisco's Italian community. Now, it's the third day daily in Italian. I'll show you the front of the church in just a couple of moments. But first, we're now approaching an area that we drivers have named Gino's Corner. Coming up on the right-hand corner will be Gino's Galateria, or Ice Cream Shop. Gino's Galateria is located in the Galateria Hall, and Gino's Galateria is the only place that 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 Gino's Galateria is the only and across the intersection on the right, Gino's gas station. Yes, indeed, you're here, Gino's Corner. Now, don't you worry about Gino, friend. He's doing just fine on himself. By the way, if you've never tried gelato, it's quite a bit different than American ice cream, as far as I'm concerned, it's quite a bit better. Be sure to visit one of our jobs too, while you're watching. Gino has a pretty good one. Incidentally, this brick building, this old brick building here to the left, uh, the right of our car, right, to the right, that says parking, was the old push station back in the 1880s. It was also about the only building in the entire East North Beach to survive the Oak Ridge Earthquake and Fire. Everything here was wiped out and made no sick by the Earthquake. Very, very few exceptions. Coming up on the left will be the Church of St. Peter of Paul. On the right will be Washington Square. This church and park form the heart of North Beach, Little Italy. Whether you're religious or not, you want to go inside this church. The altar here of the Virgin Mary is something that is absolutely incredible. The interior of this church is really beautiful. She can take a nap. Especially the pulpit, where the minister stands, it's made out of like a teakwood or rubber. I think it's It's like a spiral uh, pulpit that goes up really high and stuff. It's a really gorgeous church. <laughs> I've been I'm really into church architecture. I've never been to church quite like this. This is really beautiful. There's the entrance. Oh, we have yeah, that's going to the church for one. But this is beautiful. Thank you. This is nice. As you probably know, San Francisco has some of the best restaurants anywhere in the world. And some of the best restaurants in San Francisco are located in and around North Beach. Of those in North Beach, there's one that stands out above the crowd. That is the Restaurante Fiore d'Italia. Fiore d'Italia opened up in 1886 and was the city's first Italian restaurant. As far as I'm concerned, it remains the city's best. Front the intersection on the right, in just a moment, you'll see Fiore d'Italia. When the 1906 earthquake destroyed everything here, it also destroyed the restaurant. But miraculously, the kitchen survived. The owners of Fiore d'Italia sent their best waiters out with platters to Washington Square where they were tents set up for the earthquake survivors, giving them free Italian food from Fiore d'Italia. They were eating gourmet food while they were trying to figure out what to do with their lives. The city owes a great debt to Fiore d'Italia. It ain't worth writing home about. As we turn right, you're going to see something that is worth writing home about. The view of the church of St. Peter and Paul to the right, once we finally get around this corner, will be a beautiful view. Stops, you got to quick, quick. Better to waste a few shots and not get the good ones. I'll come back and get it. As we turn left on Powell Street, we'll be going up Bob Hill. Many people call Bob Hill Snob Hill. 
because on the top is where many of our socialites live. The expression hobnob was developed on Knob Hill. The snobs of Knob, hobnob. <laughs> Actually, the snobs of Knob in 1906, for the most part, moved out of Pacific Heights, and that's where the wealthiest and wealthier now live in. Shay Hagen out there a little bit later. For over 17 years, we've been watching the same play over and over again. Of course, I'm talking about this new one on Beach Land in Babylon. I've seen it 12 times, and I've seen it less than most people have. If you want to see this absolutely unforgettable play, look to the left as we cross Green Street. On this side of the street, you'll see three trees on the sidewalk up close to the building. That's the close to Gandhi, where you can see Beach Plank in Babylon, here to the left by those two trees. Incredible show. I'm going back to the studio here. Next week, we'll see you here. We're now living in the outskirts of the largest Chinatown in the Western world. One third of all San Franciscans are Chinese, and over half of them live in the 16 to 20 square block radius of Chinatown. Chinatown is the most densely populated area in the United States. There's more Chinese people living here than anywhere else outside of China. They publish four daily newspapers, they have their own television stations, their own radio stations, their own government headed by the five most powerful families, and there's even a recognized ambassador to San Francisco City Hall. Chinatown is often called a city within a city, but in the real way, this is a nation within a nation. Without a doubt, the Hong Kong of the West. As we cross the next street, Broadway, look to the right and you'll see the Broadway Tunnel. On the other side of that tunnel is Pacific Heights, where some of our better homes are located. For instance, when Gorbachev was here, he stayed in the Russian consulate's mansion on the Pacific Heights. The mansion is located on Broadway, just the Four Lions. That will be the right of Broadway. Down to the left, you'll see the San Francisco side of the Bay Bridge, and also an area once called the Marjorie Coast. Said to be the wickedest place in the world in the That's an opium illegal, that's where opium didn't work. The prostitution is legal, that's where brothels work. Now it's just things that are illegal, but uh, <coughs> we don't talk about those. Also on the left, you'll see a club called The Condor. The Condor was the first topless and I might add bottomless go-go joint in the United States. At The Condor, a very famous woman once danced. Her name was Carol Dota. Now you may not know Carol Dota by name, but I bet you know her reputation. Because Carol Dota was, quote, the woman with those wonderful silicon flesh. Here to the right in the window of Campo, you'll see smoke or Peking ducks hanging in the window. You'll notice they smoke the whole duck, get all. The average temperature here in San Francisco is 50 to 65 degrees year round. Today could just as easily be midsummer, spring, winter, or fall. Of a normal San Francisco summer, Mark Twain once wrote, the coldest winter I ever spent in my life was a summer I spent in San Francisco. That's saying it's usually right on the money. As we drive through the city, you'll never, you'll almost never see a screen door or a screen window. We don't need them here. It's too cold in San Francisco for flying insects to live. Makes it nice. But what's truly amazing is if you go uh, to the east of our city, about 10 or 15 miles to places like Concord, where the guy in the back is from, or Livermore just before that, on a day when we're 55, 60 degrees, they may be 90 or 100 degrees. That much of a difference in this close. And that was truly amazing. We're surrounded on three sides by water, that's why. The only seasonal difference in the city for the most part is that in the winter time it often rains two or three days a week, whereas in the summer it never rains. However, if you were here a week before last, it poured. We're in the fourth year of an ongoing drought and seemingly all rules are useless. The weather is changing. This is a nice day today. Nice and warm. Not too foggy. Not foggy at all now. It's foggy this morning a little bit. This is a good day. Coming up on the right will be the largest Chinese library in the Western world. The Chinatown branch of the San Francisco Public Library here on the right. If you'd like to know more about cable cars, look to the right one block to the corner of Washington and Mason. There, one block to the right, on the right, is just enough to the large round brick wall with a large brick smokestack. That will be the Cable Car Barn and Museum. There you can watch a 13 minute movie that will tell you everything you ever wanted to know about cable cars, but this is the last. You can all get to the cable and have brick wall shot. The Cable Car Museum is free of charge. Lots of the right, on the right, is a brick wall. 
to get there, take a base or a high street cable car, you don't go right in the barn. Yeah, do that. Look to the left, we call Spray Street, and you'll see more of Chinatown, the size of the Pyramid Building, part of the financial district, and you'll almost see a high street. Oh, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Down to the left, in just a moment, will be a very nice view. Here to the right, you'll see the Chief State Buddhist Dollars Association. There are combinations of religions, of course, that's a very critical combination. But in San Francisco, there's a lot of combinations of different religions. It's really sort of fascinating, because there's a Christian Zen center in the city. All kind of religions get together here in San Francisco. Of course, the Dollars of the Buddhist Dollars Association here. Looking at here, the left down 20th Street is a pretty nice view. Maybe not once again, but once again. <laughs> the cable car is not going anywhere fast. Oh, yeah. Are you, does it keep going? Yeah. I think it's really Well, if it's on standby, it wins the win. If it's on standby, it's still going to be going to itself. So I might as well just keep it running. Oh, I see. Actually, that's pretty empty, actually. You should see these cable cars that you're driving. Two hours of the day. Those would have been like sardine cans. So I got to know how to do it. Oh, we're not getting far. Okay, so now I'm going to get left for an hour or two or two. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like the Chinese people brought to the city by four powerful men, known as the Big Four. Get your name, huh? The Big Four brought them here to build the Transcontinental American Railroad. In the late 1870s, the Big Four built four huge mansions high atop Nob Hill. Can you do that? In 1906, three of those four mansions were destroyed by the earthquake, and large patrols were built on their side. As we come out of California Street, I'll show you the three hotels, and I'll show you on the side of the mansion. There were two other mansions up here as well, but they weren't owned by the Big Four, so they don't count. But first, as we're turning right on California, look to the left down California in just a moment, and you'll see a tall ground building. The ground building down to the left will be the building used to film the movie The Power Inferno. It's the old international headquarters of the Bank of America. It's 800 feet high, 50 feet shorter than the pyramid. Here to the left is Power Inferno. We'll be the bottom of that building later on. And coming up on the left is the Stanford Port Hotel. This is where Leo Stanford's mansion was stood to the left, one of the big four and the founder of Stanford University. Every day, the hotel staff checks the wall for a smudge mark. If they find a smudge mark, they clear it up before you wake up in the morning. That's how meticulous they are standing for course. A block ahead of us on the left is that brown brick road with a flag fall on top. That's the hotel Huntington. Mr. Huntington's mansion is a private cross the street from now that you'll see in a moment. Here to the left of the Mark Hopkins Hotel. The flight section out front will see this flag slide with the original entryway to the Mark Hopkins mansion. They built a hotel around one of the two parts of the mansion to survive. Across the intersection on the right hand corner is the old flood mansion. The smallest and most modest of the six mansions, and the only one to survive. It's owned by the Pacific Union Men's Club, and what we'll call it the PU. <laughs> the Pacific Union, only partly. An Eastern style brownstone in San Francisco, plus an all male club, PU. There's currently lawsuits pending as women are trying to gain access to these clubs, so far, wherever they've had very little success. For the most part, they're made all male. You'll see this brass fence around the uh, mansion. Back when this was still a man of personal home, there was one man whose full-time job was to polish that brass. Now they're just sort of letting it go to pot. Here's the right, we're walking down to Caramont Hotel. If you watch the television series Hotel, you know this to be the St. Gregory. This is the Hotel Hotel. The Fairmont was built in 1905 and destroyed in 1906 by the earthquake just before the grand opening. It was rebuilt and finally opened up late 1907. The cheapest room here costs $170 a night and has no view. The most expensive cost, on the cheap side, $5,000 a night. On the expensive side, $15,000 a night, depending on the added amenities you order. Whenever Democratic politicians come to San Francisco, they usually stay to Fairmont. When Republicans come to town, they stay to St. Francis, which I'll show you later on. Right hand corner, that L-shaped apartment building 
building you see on the corner on the right is a building Alfred Hitchcock used for his thriller, Vertigo. Here on the right-hand corner. Straight ahead in the distance, the Richmond San Rafael Bridge, bridging the East Bay City of Richmond to the Marin County City of San Rafael. The island ahead is Angel Island, the brick building at the foot of the hill, the cable cut by the museum to the last of nice view. As I turn left, take a breath. Too much to say on one corner. If you look back to the left now, I'm pointing to the Mark Hopkins, not the Fairmont, but the Mark Hopkins on the corner, to the left. On the top of the Mark Hopkins, you'll see tinted windows. That's the top of the Mark. Perhaps the most luxurious nightclub in the United States, if not the world. The top of the Mark, and I top the Mark Hopkins. Jones Street the way we're turning and jumped off the next hillside, the Jones Street Hill. As we go off this hill, going about 60 miles an hour, just kidding. Up the intersection on the left hand corner, that's the apartment building where Ronald and Nancy Reagan astrologer lives. <laughs> October 17th break looked like a birthday party. The earthquake destroyed the water mains in the city, so the fire department had no water to fight the fires. Fifty fires raised out of control for three days and two nights, and they continued burning for 28 days more. The fire the fire department was out of They shut the Van Ness Avenue, eight blocks to the right, and blew up every building on it to create a fire break. The plan worked. Almost everything on this side was destroyed, while little was on the other side survived. Three-fifths of San Francisco had either shaken or burned the ground by the time it was over. According to the U.S. Geological Research Survey, we've got a 60% chance of having a quake that bad or worse within the next 29 years. With that information, you can do what we do. Pretend like you didn't hear it. Coming up on the right, this part of the building is a California Masonic Memorial Temple and Auditorium. When Adolf Hitler's troops were making their way through Europe, the priests of the Cathedral of Florence were afraid that he was going to steal the beautiful doors off the church. Therefore, they took the doors down and brought them in hiding and made the doors cast the doors. When the war was over, those cast were sent to churches around the world. The Cathedral got the cast to the doors of Paradise by Michelangelo. The doors are there by Pistol Pole. As we cross the next intersection, look behind the car to the left is the main doorway. It'll be well across the intersection, but you can see it because of all the trees. Behind us to the left, the front door, once we're through the intersection, you'll see the bronze cast of Michelangelo's Doors of Paradise from the baptismal pool of the Cathedral of Florence. And once again, behind us to the left, the front door of the church, if you're in the front, it's coming out right now. The Doors of Paradise. was seven miles long and seven miles wide. We're about the size of Disney World in Orlando, Florida. We often resemble Disney World more than you might imagine. For instance, Disney World has a roller coaster, and so do we. 
We're about to go down the Knob Hill roller coaster. They said he's kid. Then they looked straight ahead and said, maybe not. The problem is, however, we're not going straight ahead. We're going to go down a real hill to the right. The Knob Hill roller coaster coming uh, down. The Knob Hill roller coaster coming down. You're welcome. Back in the <laughs> Back in the 80s, tell me you are my horseman. Back in the 1860s, a man named Mr. Holiday was sitting in Eaton Square. He saw a horse-drawn carriage climbing up Knob Hill. The horse lost his footing and his supplies were rolling down the hill. Mr. Holiday said there's got to be a better way and invented the cable car in 1870. Okay, friends, hold on to what you got. This is the Knob Hill Roller Coaster. They said, oh, I like that. Can we do it again? Okay. You got it. You got it. And it's not even Toyota. It's by the way a Ford. You care? And away we go. Can someone say, "Help me, help me"? Now get on the street, people. Got people across the street here say, "Help traffic." Oh, any side. All right, we'll just sit right here. We'll, we'll get a good old run out anyway. Back this sucker right up, and we'll uh, next time we'll leave the grind. We didn't blow it. Uh huh. <laughs> it's probably true. Probably true. You should see the taxi cab though. In the middle of the night, when there's not much traffic, man, these cabbies come flying down these hills. But I showed you where Steve McQueen jumped off. The cabbies actually leave the ground there sometimes. Coming down the top of Knob Hill, the front ends actually leave the ground as they go over. Personally, I would not be a cabbie anywhere around Mount Hill. <laughs> I'd be housing it anywhere, but certainly not on these hills. We have some crazy cabbies. Okay, here we go, friends. Hold on to what you got. And they said, one more time, please. Are we okay? Street, Geary. That's real fire things like the current center there, the Golden Gate there, the ACT, the San Francisco Empire, and that type of thing. If you want to go to what I believe to be the best all-around restaurant in San Francisco, it is the Cliff House. Go to the right of Geary. Geary dead ends at the Cliff House and the ocean. If you want to go to Japantown, go to the right of Geary. Geary goes right to the middle of Japantown. If you want to go to what many people are now calling the best overall restaurant in San Francisco, it is the New York chain, the Post Trio. Look over here to the right, on the other side of the street, you'll see the Hotel Prescott. The Post Trio is in the Prescott. I stayed in front of the second floor, and I still put down the stairs, what can I say you can choose? Trader Vic's is about a block and a half up to the right, and the Bohemian Inns Club in front of the is about two blocks up to the right. Hill, I mentioned the Democrats usually stay at the Paramount. The Republican politicians or foreign dignitaries come to town, they usually stay on the right of the St. Francis, Francis Hotel. The section of the St. Francis on the right hand corner survived the other six earthquake and fire. This new section of the right did not survive, that's why it's new. Several years ago, President Gerald Ford was staying here, and he walked out the door by the sign of the English Grill and headed to the right. There was an ancient call in the English Grill, and she started shooting at it. The bullet marks are still on the wall. In just a moment, I'll show you the bullet marks. The first is the left intersects on the left hand corner, stacks the cabinet. Up to the left will be the professor J. Cotone, the beautiful star light on the crown. To the right down follow, the margin of 200 the intersects will be the world's largest the left hand corner. The second is the bullet marks. This is the right of the left hand Across the intersection on the right, Union Square. Below Union Square, the world's largest underground parking lot, there's just about a thousand cars to park there. The statue of the city is a victory statue attributed to the veterans of the Spanish-American War. 
The bearded gentleman dressed in black used to stay in Union Square is a uh, Eastern Orthodox minister collecting money for the homeless people. Nice guy. There's a lot of work here with the homeless folks. Stay at the hotel, they fly that country flag. I'm not sure who that is. That's where it's trying to keep track. If you look to the right across the square, you'll see that brick building. The brick building is, uh, the brick building is, you know what that is? French? That's French? Okay. The brick building here is Macy's, the white store next to that, I'm Mackin. See all those windows in the front of I'm Mackin? October 17th, every one of those windows except two popped out and shattered off the street, cutting a lot of people. When they replaced them, they replaced them with plexiglass. Oh, that's a great idea. Now they'll pop out and knock somebody out. Plexiglass is heavy. To the left of right, you'll see that flat drill. That's the Needham Markets, which locals call Needless Markups. And the white store comes out with a rise in the window. That's Gucci. Of course, if you see Baby Talk, that's Gucci Gucci. Also, notice to the right, you'll see Bailey of Switzerland. To the right of that, they look like white steel cactuses. That's Maiden Lane, a few block shopping street for some of the city's most famous boutiques are located. That was a brothel drug in the early 1900s and the late 1800s. Look to the left as we cross Stockton, and you'll see the Stockton Street Tunnel. The other side of that tunnel is the Chinese section of Chinatown. On weekends, it's a parking lot. We have left the Stockton Street Tunnel. Gumpster Park Store, the city's first department store. Gumpster opened up in 1886. A fascinating place to shop or browse. To the right, Laura Ashley and she's going to the party. To the left, Elizabeth Arch. To the right, Cartier. To the left, Sue Rodney Bowers. To the right, Bill Berry of London Paris, Stuck in Corner Shooting Company, Riding Corner, Brooks Brothers. As we circle out on Grant, look to the right down Grant as far as you can see, and you'll see a tall grass building that looks like a new park. To the right. That is the Yadavid Wayne and Garden. Marriott Hotel, about 116 specialty shops and restaurants. It opened up October 17th, the day of the earthquake. Talk about coming into the bank. By the way, it's for sales. Here's the right to the Banana Republic, a safari store. To the left, the Erica Meyer Gallery at Fila. To the right, Tiffany Company. Two blocks straight ahead of our car is Dragon Gate, the official entryway to Chinatown. On the top of Dragon Gate, there's two dragons looking at a sphere upheld by a lotus stem. That symbol represents China. The sign hanging down from the gate roughly translates as, under heaven, all are equal. A popular belief in Chinatown. On either side of the gate are stone dragons, symbols of good fortune. As we drive through the gate, you'll get some good fortune. But if you want a lot of good fortune, you've got to rub a Buddha's belly. There's got to be a fat Buddha, but even these skinny Buddhas do the job. Many of the shops in Chinatown have fat Buddhas sitting around for just that reason. Have you ever seen those Lanceroni commercials where they're driving a cable car through Dragon Gate singing Rice Saloni in the San Francisco Treat? Those are filmed in our motorized cable cars. As we drive through the gate, someone in the back of the car ring that bell hanging down from the ceiling two times on the count of two. When he or she does, everyone else in the car, as loudly as you can, sings the Lanceroni people. The people on the other side of the gate will know they're in San Francisco and they see the car. You've been here because unless you've done one thing, Bonkers, you haven't experienced this city. Now, I already do this, but I think I can trust my passengers to sing. If you don't sing, I'm going to look like a real schmeal. Again, the song is very easy. It goes, Why it's the road, it's San Francisco Street. Okay. Wow, we're going to ring the bell. Now, we'll ring the bell two times, and then everyone sing it loudly as you can. Okay, I thought that was right here. We're all waiting for the light to change. As you cross the intersection, look to the left. Other side of the street, this is that brick building. To the left of that, you will see a church with a black iron rock fence as you go to the intersection. That church is the Ecclesia de Notre Dame de la Victoria, or the Church of the Victorious Virgin Mary, the first French Catholic church in San Francisco. It's a gorgeous church. You can see these uh, stone dragons on the side of the gate. This gate, by the way, is patterned after a Buddhist monastery up on Stockton Street, or Stockton and Jackson. Okay, you lay in the back. When I say two, you ring the bell two times, and then everyone, loud and loud again, sing the last one in One, two. Right, it's so funny, from Stockton, so so tree. That was pretty. Avenue, we're getting to the people of Chinatown from 
Chiang Kai-shek. Chinatown was the original downtown part of the city. This street was originally named as DuPont Street back in the days of the downtown. When Chinese came here in the 1870s, 80s, and 90s, they just settled the downtown area. In 1906, this area was completely destroyed by the earthquake, except for one building, which I'll show you in a couple of moments. The Chinese rebuilt everything in three years. An incredible amount of work to save Chinatown. The only road to survive was all St. Mary's Cathedral. If you're trying to decide where to eat at in Chinatown, a good rule of thumb is this. Stick your head at the front door of the restaurant. If you see a lot of Chinese people inside eating, it's probably pretty good. If you only see tourists, I wouldn't go there. The Chinese know the best place to eat in Chinatown. The best restaurant of all without a doubt is the Empress of China Roof Garden Restaurant. Three block, four blocks ahead on the right, you'll see that tall gray building with the lip sticking out. That's at Grant and Clay. Without a doubt, the best food in Chinatown. And as far as I'm concerned, the best food in China. I've been there a couple times. The food at the Empress of China is fantastic. I think you'll love it. Grand and Clay. The second best, if you cross the street from that down the block, it is the Imperial Palace. Across the next intersection, the road in just a moment, you'll see our St. Mary's Cathedral. It was again the only building in Chinatown to survive the earthquake. It was built in 1870. The bridge was used to build the church and ship here around the horn from China. Across the intersection on the left hand corner, something you don't see every day, a Chinese gong. Across the heavens on the left, which is that long skinny sign of the Bank of America. Above that, we see the pagodas is Gold Mountain Sage Buddhist Monastery by the Venerable Master Hua. Gold Mountain Sage Buddhist Monastery opened up the first Buddhist university in the Western world. They also own the city of 10,000 Buddhists in Talmadge, California, which is north of the city, 50, 60 miles, I guess. And it's personally where I personally go. That's my temple and I'm a Buddhist too. A lot of Buddhists in San Francisco besides the Chinese. Gold Mountain Safety Buddhist Monastery is walking ahead of the left. And I don't mind if you come in there and check out the Buddhism talk in the monks. Good for people. Hear this sound? This sound. Hear that? That's the sound of the cable traveling nine and a half miles an hour to the other street level. Section on the right hand corner in just a moment, you'll again see the towering inferno. The old international headquarters of the Bank of America. In front of the bank, you'll see a large black sculpture. The local travel sculpture the bank of heart. It's hard, cold, stone. I don't know why the bank is called. <laughs> As we turn right on Montgomery Street, we'll be turning right on the last street of the West. This is the main street of California's financial district. That's it for the West Coast. Everything ahead of us on the other side of the street is filled with it, filled in around 1880. That's all land up there. You'll need to proud to know that our financial district has been built on garbage. As we come out of Montgomery, look to the left, other side of the street, and you'll see the Wells Fargo Bank Museum next to the Bank of Guam. The museum is free and open daily to the public. You can find out how not only the West was won, but also how it was uh, <coughs> financed. Wells Fargo Bank Museum. Fun place to visit. As we cross the next street, Pine Street, look to the left, other side of the street, down to the end of the block, and you will see the Pacific Coast Stock Exchange, the main stock exchange for the West Coast of the United States. That will be to the left, other side of the street, down to the end of the block, next to the big statue of the small clock. Here to the left. Bush and Michael Dukakis are battling out for the presidency. A group of Bush supporters, I mean, sorry, Dukakis supporters, came down here about 5 o'clock every morning and put Dukakis stickers over the name Bush. During the campaign, this was known as Dukakis Street. In fact, there was an accident here one morning, and I heard the traffic lady on the radio say there's been an accident on Dukakis Street. Everyone knows what she's talking about. San Francisco has been a democratic stronghold since the beginning. If you have access to a car, here in the city, there's one place you don't want to miss. It's the most beautiful view in the entire Bay Area, as far as I'm concerned. It is Twin Peaks, five points San Francisco. So before I tell you how to get up there, let me give you a little warning. If it's foggy, don't go to Twin Peaks. You will hate yourself, you will hate me for talking about it. Don't go to Twin Peaks, it's foggy. But if it's clear, it's a fantastic place to go. Here on the right, one block over, that's Market Street. We're going to turn left on in a couple moments. Go to the right, up Market, into the hills. Market will become Portola. Keep going. We 
to hit the top of the hill, turn right on Twin Peaks Boulevard. That will take you higher to the highest point in the city and a view you'll never forget. When you get out of your car, behind you, you're going to see a big dirt hill. Climb up to the top of that dirt hill, and then on one side, you'll see the Pacific Ocean. On the other side, you'll see the bay cities of San Jose, Oakland, and the Golden Gate Bridge. It is an incredible view for Twin Peaks. But again, if it's foggy, don't go up with what it's like on the plane. If it's clear, you'll love it day or night. And that is an ocean of light. Great up market, which our main street into the hill, sunrise at the very top of the hill, on Twin Peaks Boulevard. As we turn left on market, I thought it would be the best time to go up there is at night, but it's all the lights. I would go up there two times, both in the daytime and at night. It's totally different both times. It's fantastic. At that daytime and night. Yeah, it was clear. As we turn left on market, look to the right, as far as you can see, and you'll see the Twin Peaks. The two big hills to the right, as far as you can see. Those are sacred to the Native Americans. They call them Native Express. They are renamed Twin Peaks for America to cover San Francisco. As you cross the next intersection, look up to the left, you'll see a tall grayish brown building with this box of dirt. That's the Al Cole building. This box of dirt to the left, here on the right, Chocolate Motor. To the left side and to the right, you'll see tall building with long skinny windows. There's two more of those buildings to the right of that. Those are four of the five buildings of the Embarcadero Complex built by the Rockefellers. The fifth building of the Embarcadero Complex is the High Regency Embarcadero. And as a car on the left, that's that gray building with a big square on top. In the middle of the square is a round restaurant, the Equinox. Sitting your table for 50 minutes, you'll see the skyline as the Equinox spins about. So you head the clock tower sitting high atop the third building built 1896. When the two buildings in uh, this part of the city to survive the earthquake's quake. The way we know when the 1906 earthquake hit is that clock stopped immediately. The clock was left off for a full year and started back up on the first anniversary. Every year since then, San Franciscans gather there in front of the clock tower and have a memorial service for the victims and survivors of the 06 earthquake. When we did that this year, we had an earthquake on the way home. We had a bad earthquake, but let me tell you, the first time I really walked away from that celebration with my knees on this year. That was scary. It's like about a 4.3 that day. And the life of medical train is on the corporate headquarters for Beckel Company. The right. And the next street is Mission Street, our secondary main street. The Mission District, our Latino community, lies out to the right, only about a mile and a half or so. The Mission District. Every car to the left, you'll notice the Bayshore Freeway is closed. There's a very good reason for that. You heard about the Cypress Structure Section of 880. That was the one that pancaked over in Oakland. When they finished building that freeway, they came over here and built the Bayshore. It is the exact same type of freeway, this exact same design, but it's one year newer. October 17th, according to the California Department of Transportation, Caltrans, had the Loma Prieta earthquake lasted just two to six seconds longer, just two to six seconds more, the Bayshore also would have pancaked. That's how close we were. If there was any benefit from the October 17th quake, it was this freeway. We've been trying to get it torn down since the thing was built. Finally, it's going to be torn down. They're going to start tearing it down any day now. They said 90 days about 90 days ago, so it should be starting to get day now. This is just an on ramp. You can't really stop here with the same type of freeway. Nobody will see this in that vehicle freeway. And that's the car of the ride. Across the parking lot, on the side of the street, you see that white building with the trees on top. That's earthquake damage in front of them. That. that is typical earthquake damage. That type of damage happens all over the city. Well, you were seeing in the media, houses laying in the middle of the street, massive fires. It didn't happen for the most part in San Francisco, except for the Marina District. That type of damage is rare here. Of course, there are lots of buildings completely wiped out. But for San Francisco, this was much more common. For instance, my front porch is now three inches away from my house. Every time I go up to my front porch into my house, I look down that little hole and I say, oh boy. I'm glad my house will go on a lot. <laughs> so this is really typical. This kind of stuff happens all over the city. There was a building about four blocks to the right and block over that did collapse in the south of Market area, this area. But most of the really heavy damage happened in the, uh, the Marina District. There was a lady in the Marina District who lived in a third floor apartment. You probably heard this on the news. When the earth, she had gone to sleep on her couch. When the earthquake hit, the lady got up from her couch, third floor apartment, and walked out what had once been a plate glass window onto the street. Her building sunk two floors in the street, in the ground. That was the most impressive story I heard. Abraham 
Here to the right, you will see some more earthquake damage. Again, this is just happening everywhere. Coming up to the right, you'll see these wooden pylons holding up the Bayshore Freeway. These streets that go under the Bayshore were all closed after the earthquake until these things were built. Again, a two-second earthquake and these could have collapsed, but just to be safe, let's get out from under here, shall we? The plan as it stands right now is to tear these down and build a sunken freeway. Not an underground freeway, but a freeway sunken into the ground in the place of the Bayshore. That hasn't completely been decided yet, but I'm not sure at this point what they're going to do. Straight ahead, you'll see another double-decker freeway. That's the San Francisco side of the Bay Bridge. The Bay, Bay Bridge is a five-lane freeway. The upper level comes into the city, the lower goes back to Oakland and points beyond. But when the bridge was built, about 50 years ago, all automobiles used the upper level. Railroad trains used the lower, and streetcars used the lower level. That was changed about 30 years ago. When you come to San Francisco on any road bridge, you pay a toll. The toll on the Bay Bridge is $1, the toll on the Golden Gate is $2. Without paying a toll. So, while back on her tour, a lady asked what I thought was a pretty good question. She said, Why do suspension bridges stand up? If you look at it from the distance, you think they just fall right down. I found a bridge authority to find out. Straight ahead, see these two tubes crossing the street? There's massive steel cable inside of these tubes. If you were to cut these two tubes in half, the Bay Bridge on this side would collapse. This is called the San Francisco Anchorage, and these two tubes and their cables inside are the hub the Bay Bridge up. Of course, it'd be rather difficult to cut those tubes in half. When they were building the bridge, San Franciscans wanted a suspension bridge because, said they, it's prettier. People of Oakland wanted to cancel the bridge because, said they, in the event of an earthquake, it's stronger. They agreed to disagree. Half the bridge is suspension, the other half is cantilever. It was the cantilever part that had the upper level 20 foot section drop into the lower October 17th. But we're not saying anything about that because the big one's yet to come. We don't know what's going to happen there. Here in the car to the right, you'll see the visiting USS New Jersey. Oh. If you go aboard this uh, incredible ship, browse around, you can walk around, find out how the state is living, how your taxpayer dollars are being spent. We get these in, in Florida every once in a while. I tried to go on, I haven't gone on this one yet, but these ships are fantastic places to visit. It's really fascinating how this works together and how the taxes work in other Are there four like these? The Missouri is one of these things. Someone's on the Missouri this place, right? Uh, <laughs> this way out in the distance, you will see the East Bay City of Port of Oakland in the distance. You may have seen West Java House here to ride, by the way. They film a lot of Chevy commercials out front here. They're probably the Chevy out front while thing in the heartbeat of America today is Chevrolet. So very much of a local lunch joint. If you get a sandwich for a dollar, you can get a hamburger for about two dollars. We're now turning left on the Embarcadero. This street and area are called the Embarcadero. The Embarcadero received their name because back before the building of the Golden Gate and Bay Bridges about 50 years ago, most people embarked the city by boat and ferry. The boats and ferries came here to the waterfront, but the waterfront came to be known as the Embarcadero. This brick building here to the left suffered a lot of damage from the October 17th earthquake, and they were going to be able to rebuild it, but then some homeless people squatted it and we're having a fire to cook some dinner and it got out of hand. Now the building's probably going to be torn down. That's all the smudge marks are just in the wall. Look to the right, as we pass the fire station, here to the right, you'll notice that the base is close to the center of the island. This side of the island is the suspension, the other side is cantilever. The name of that island is Yadaba Buena Island. When the village of Yadaba Buena was named, renamed San Francisco, Goat Island was renamed Yadaba Buena Island. The point where the bridge goes through the island is the world's largest man-made bore. Now, some people say I'm the biggest bore in the world, but that's a different kind of bore. This bore means hole. On the left side of the island, you'll see that large flat island. That flat island is Treasure Island. It's the world's largest man-made island. It was man-made for the 1939 World's Fair. The original intention was that was to be San Francisco International Airport. But in World War II, the Navy said they needed that land, so they gave us some lands on the city land south of here, where the airport now stands, and made that into a Navy base. See that pan building with the long skinny windows? That was to be the International Airport Terminal for San Francisco. If you saw the movie Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, that was the Berlin Airport in that movie. Today, by the way, it's a museum, and you can go over to Treasure Island, they'll let you go in there and look around. 
Here to the left, and in front of us now, you can see the Bay Shore is clearly a double-decker freeway, just like the cyber structure of 80. You'll also notice that it's U-G-L-Y. It ain't got no alibi, it's u -Glix. That's why we've been trying to get it torn down. You'll also notice straight ahead, the Bay Shore abruptly ends at this point. The reason is that they were building it, the plan was this end was supposed to hook up to the Bay Bridge, and they continue all the way around to 101 South. The other end was supposed to go over Fisherman's Wharf, over the Marina District, over the Presidio and hook up to the Golden Gate Bridge. When it got to this point, the people of San Francisco said, enough is enough, we hate this ugly thing, it's completely blocking the skyline. And so they passed an amendment in the uh, ballot to stop it at this point. I'll show the other end slowly. Now finally it's going to be torn down. Bye bye Bayshore, we'd love to see you go. That's that building. It is a big mess. So I must say, I used to drive on the upper level on these tours. The view from the upper level is really beautiful. But, uh, that's fine, I don't want to be up there anymore anyway. <laughs> huh? The court was looking there. Oh, he's just a psycho guy. Yeah, he's just... Uh, I guess he's a little people. All, all most of the mental hospitals here were closed uh, a few years ago. And most of all the patients went out of the streets. So we have a lot of people on the streets here.
folks always ask me what that is. It's a restaurant. But they say that if you have the food too much to drink, you walk out the door, it's not going to be a restaurant. You're going to be right. It's a long ways down. Now I'll show you what I think is a pretty neat optical illusion. Look back behind the car to the left, behind us to the left, and in just a moment, you'll see the top of the pyramid. In another moment, to the right of that, you'll see the top of the towering inferno, behind us to the left. Now, the pyramid is only 50 feet higher than the towering inferno, just 50 feet. But from this angle, it looks like hundreds of feet because of all the hills and valleys. That's a pretty neat optical illusion, I think. There's a lot of good ways to experience the city of San Francisco, and as far as I'm concerned, you're on one of the best right now. But there's only one way to experience San Francisco Bay, and that is one more yacht coming up on the right. At Hong Kong Yachts, you can take the luxury yacht, the city of San Francisco, on a gourmet lunch or dinner cruise in this bay that you will never forget as long as you live. The prices for Hong Kong vary radically depending on the day of week, the time of day, and the time of day. You have to have reservations to check the different complete information. The Hong Kong Yachts, here in the right, there's no better way to experience the bay. The yacht is not out on a lunch cruise. Actually, already dinner cruise, it looks like. They do it right here, almost. When the cruise ships come in, we get quite a few of them. They come up here on the right at the next pier, at least that flag on top. The number one business in San Francisco is you guys, tourism. The number one tourist attraction in the city is Fisherman's Wharf. The number one tourist attraction on the wharf is Pier 39. Pier 39 has about 105 specialty shops and about 15 restaurants. From the end of the pier is a beautiful view of Alcatraz. Towards the end is a large merry-go-round or carousel. Towards the center is a large stage where some of the city's best street performers perform on a donation of comedy basis. So these guys are good. If you'd like to know more about San Francisco history, there's a place at Pier 39 called the San Francisco Experience. There you can experience the other state's earthquake and fire. You can experience the October 17th earthquake and fires. Experience the building of the Golden Gate and Bay Bridges and a lot of other wonderful things. Now, let's be honest, people. This is a tourist attraction. You know what I'm saying? You're not really going to experience an earthquake there, but I do think you'll have a good time and enjoy a visit to the San Francisco experience. When you first walk into Pier 39, the experience is on the right up the wooden steps to the second level. There's also a place here called Music Tracks where you wear a set of headphones and sing along into a machine with your favorite songs from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. When the tape comes out, it's your voice, the original music, but not the original artist's voice. You can tell all your friends back home that you really made all those songs that made the people cry. When you first walk into this here, it's on the right, on the first level, directly below the San Francisco Experience, that's the music track. We currently have about 50 male harbor seals here. They shouldn't have come in the first place, sorting out so many of them, and they should have long since been gone. But they won't leave. Three weeks ago, the city got in boats and started chasing them away, making a bunch of noise. They turned around and came back. We don't know why they're here, but apparently they're not going to go anywhere. If you want to see the harbor seals, come here from the right. You see this little building? There's a walkway there that goes right beside Pier 39 out of the very end. And in just a moment, you'll see all the people standing here looking at the harbor seals here to the right, very end. Six left? Oh, okay, there's a fine leaving. You said there's only six left now. Okay, that's good. I've been trying to get rid of this thing for a long time. There's a lot of blue and gold plates that takes you under the Golden Gate Bridge, the Bay Bridge, along the old waterfront, and around Alcatraz. It's also $14. Kids, seniors, and military folks are all seven. The only legal way to go to Alcatraz is the red and white fleet Pier 41. The Pier 41 is the right. The basic ticket price is $7.50. You can take the Pier 41 with your family and friends to Alcatraz and enjoy the beautiful view. The Pier 41 is the best place to go to for a couple of dollars more, you get headphones off an excellent narration of Exit Mates and Drives. If you want to go to Alcatraz tomorrow, buy your tickets today. They've been selling for tomorrow for a good part of the day. The pop is now starting mid-afternoon. So if you want to go to Alcatraz, go over there now and get your tickets for tomorrow. Monday shouldn't be as crowded as May the weekends. You can also buy tickets today for Monday as well from right about. Just be on the safe side, but they almost never sell out on the weekdays. They'll also take you on the around the rock cruise, which is quite nice. The next guard on the, of the prison is on the boat with you, saying things like, under that tree on the right, I think that machine gun Kelly. That's a lot of fun. They'll also take you to Marine World Africa, USA, at Vallejo. And believe it or not, they've got a way to take you to the wine country by ferry. You have to rent a car when you get up there, but check with information. That's a really neat way to go to the wine country. <laughs> I noticed that. They ignored me the whole tour, and all of a sudden, the wine country? I hope you enjoyed your tour today. 
If you have any questions, I'll happily give you any information I possibly can. If you have any comments about the tour, good or bad, I'd love to hear those because I do listen and I change my tour accordingly. It's my job to help you enjoy your stay, your stay in San Francisco. And as for that age-old question, I wonder if this guy would be offended if I gave him a tip. The answer is I can assure you he would not be. When you're leaving the car, please do me a favor. Exit only to the right by the sidewalk so you don't get hit by one of our kamikaze cabbies. Because that would be a San Francisco bummer if ever there was one. Thanks a lot and enjoy everybody's favorite city, San Francisco. Thanks a lot, folks. Enjoy your stay. Going. second thought I was up in that, on the third floor there, facing the, yeah, I was right up there, room 37, that's where I was. You gotta come over here to see it. 37 was my apartment. So yeah, 37 up there, that was it. This is the inside, the inner courthouse, and uh, the reason why I remember being up in that one was because I, I could hear Long Beach, and I could see Long Beach from, uh, from my apartment. I was up on the top floor. That looks like 27. Is that 37? Yeah, up on the top there. The okay. Top. And so this, this is... This was my apartment building. Okay. And it hasn't changed a whole lot. No, it hasn't. So uh, this is... Uh, there it is. So now we're going to go on down to Long Beach, but I just wanted to show you this. Yeah, well, I'm this trying place. to get it all in here. Looks uh, really nifty, John. Did you take many dips in this pool here? Not too many dips in this pool. No, what was... I, uh, you know, I what's wrong? Really? hard in the Navy, and it's just kind of a place to hang my hat. Yeah. I'm not as good at parties, but... Uh -huh. These are apartment buildings, and this is the neighborhood. It's not too bad. Yeah. We'll just take a panoramic shot here. Ah, oh, lucky number 12. And yes, John... Did not go without his Pepsi. Look at that right there. He always had something to drink. Very refreshing. All right, Jen Haas, thanks for the tour. And who knows, part of the glue on this mailbox that they haven't painted it, it doesn't look like they've painted it. Part of the glue was probably from the sticker that had my name and his palm was on there. This is my mailbox right here. I thought it should be. 
I know it was that mailbox. It was right over there. It was this one. So. Now we're going to go down to my favorite restaurant, the Park Pantry in Long Beach. That's where we're going to have breakfast and have the best jam and toast in the world. So that, that's where we're going right now. So let's go. Shall we? John, I think, I think Mr. Palm's about ready to come out now. Oh, great. Wonderful. That, uh, that gentleman that I just talked to has lived on this street practically all of his life, and uh, he remembers uh, when this, when this building was built. And so that's really something to come in contact with someone that was here here when I was here, so we just I just talked to him. I can't can't remember him, but, uh, but that is really exciting. He was here when uh, when I was living here, so that's kind of an interesting fact to know. Mm -hmm. And everything else is pretty much the same. Apartment building. This is the place, Belmont Shores Apartments. And I was in apartment 14, which is right there. And uh, there's Julie. And there's a for rent sign. And it says that this place is for rent. Finished single apartment. And we're going to come back and see where my apartment was. There it is right there. I used to walk up steps, there's steps over there. This is Belmont Shore and there's the Broadway building across the street. Some nice houses down this street. That kind of gives you an idea of exactly where it is. It's still a pretty nice place. And, uh, and we're going to go eat now, aren't we, Jules? And what do you think of this place? It's really nice. It's, it's okay. better than the other one we saw. It is. It is. It's really pretty and it seems like the homes are better and everything. I like it better than it's good. Well, you know where we are. Queen Mary. Julie. Queen Mary Hotel. Yeah, the Spruce Goose Dome. And the parking lot. Where we park our car. Over there. Smile.
Charles, everyone. John in front of the Queen Mary. Look at that. He looks like the King Mary. Oh boy, he's gonna love these pictures. Oh, I'm right behind him. We've got this goose goose there. This building right here. Let's go into that next. A beautiful day out here in Long Beach. Yeah. Oh, the Oh, John looks really happy. Oh, here he comes. We're still rolling, John. Well, here we are. First leg of our adventure in L.A. We're at the uh, Queen Mary. Queen Mary was uh, used during World War II. It was actually built in the 30s uh, during the Depression years. It uh, finally, uh, the keel was set. The thing was completed. During the war, it was a warship, and we're going to be going on board here in just a minute to uh, show you some more of the insides of the Queen Mary. Queen Mary was one time one of the fastest uh, ships of its type in the world. And uh, inside the ballrooms, uh, we're going to be seeing some ballrooms, staterooms, we're going to see the bridge, the engine room, and it's really going to be an exciting adventure. So uh, welcome aboard the Queen Mary in Long Beach. And a little, little bit later on after the Queen Mary, we're going to be taking you through the Spruce Goose, Howard Hughes, uh, world famous, world famous, uh, which is in this dome over here. It's a world famous. Let me start over. Shall we start over? Later on. <laughs> later on, we're going to be. Later on, afterwards, we're going to be going to the Spruce Goose, which is Howard Hughes World War II transport plane. It's still, uh, after all these years, the largest plane in the world. With eight engines, wingspan. That's incredible. And it's also housed in this white dome over here, which happens to be largest geodesic dome in the world. Largest geodesic dome in the world. So this is a pretty incredible place and I'm sure that uh, you're going to enjoy your trip through this, uh, this cavalcade. Julia is, been, is my, my photographer and she's doing a real outstanding job and uh, I'm happy that uh, she could be along on this trip down here to Long Beach. Queen Mary is also a first-class hotel and many of the passengers can stay on board the Queen Mary in the very same suites and staterooms that the first-class passengers used when they made their transatlantic voyages. We're going to see some of those suites too in this very classy hotel, the Queen Mary.
picture of the Norwegian flag. Some nice fashions here, right? This is the Grand Ballroom. Inside the Queen Mary. And this is where they had many dances. Let's see. 